Welcome back, uh, back on the dot. And um, where we left off was we did the uh, tune-up and the uh, O2 sensor in the previous two videos. Um, this video is going to be kind of a long one. It might be two parts, it might not be. Let's see how it goes. Um, strut, a um, drive axle. Let's get, let's get to it. All right, let's jump right into this. Um, first thing we have to do is we have to get everything off of this assembly, because this entire assembly has to come off, this whole thing. And we're gonna have it on the floor, and that's how we're gonna replace the strut. Um, so what we have to do is get everything off it first. So I'm going to take off, uh, let me see if I can get this light to stay up here so we can see. The ABS sensor has to come out right there, 10 millimeter bolt just slides out, easy peasy. I got to unclip it from the strut. It just pushes off. I'll show you real quick. That's it. Just pushes off. No big deal. Same thing on this side. Um, I might need to use a pry bar on this to get the brake line out of the strut. But again, not a big deal. We need to remove the caliper. I need to take the sway bar strut off. That needs to come off as well. And I think that's it for accessory stuff that's got to come off I think that's it um, all right I'm gonna do all that off camera because you guys don't need you don't need to see how to take the caliper off um, basically what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the caliper off and I'm probably actually gonna leave the caliper mount on there because there's really no reason to take it off I don't need to take it off all right guys as you can see there I got the uh, sway bar arm off um, Anti-lock is hanging. The caliper's off, and the brake line is off the strut. Um, quick tech tip, you guys, just so you know, that if you want to get the caliper off really easy, um, because the, there still might be bite on the, uh, sometimes you get a ridge on the end of your uh, rotors, and you can't get these off really easy. If you stick, a drive pin or a big screwdriver down inside of here and catch it in the fin of your disc and then you just pull this way and then just pull as hard as you can this way you'll see the caliper start to cock and then it'll be loose and then you can slide it off relatively easy and it'll go back on just as easy as well um, okay so next I think what we have to do now is we have these special Torx head bolts here, there's one there, and there's one down there, and I had, the last time I did this, I had to buy a special set of uh, sockets, and I'll show you what those look like. Um, as you can see over here, that bushing is, is broken half, and uh, it's going to cause that uh, patrol arm to rattle around and bang when you hit a big bump, and uh, no bueno, so we're going to replace it. Um, the factory one's aluminum, and the one that I got is cast iron, but it isn't really going to matter. In order to get this lower control arm off, we have to take the bumper support off. And I think we're gonna do that next. So uh, let's get set up to remove that bumper support. As you guys can see here, uh, the cover on the bottom of the car, I just have it down on one side. I don't wanna take, necessarily take the whole thing off. There's no need to. Um, what we have to do is, uh, there's three bolts. Let me get the light here. There's one there, there's one there, and then there's one right there and it holds this support on and if you can see way down there I'll try to try to hit it with the thing these have to come out as well down here let me see if I can give you a better look here these here and the reason why is uh, let me get back up on top and I'll show you so if you look down there that's the bolt for the control arm and right in front of that you guessed it is that support for the front bumper so that support has to come out there's absolutely no way you can get at that uh that bolt head and it takes that special socket so uh that that bumper support has to come out I'll show you guys a set of sockets I bought for that special star. It's Doratec. Um, I don't know if it's a great name or not. I bought these on Amazon. I think I paid 60 bucks for these. I'm not 100% sure. I bought them a while ago, a couple years ago. But um, they are impact grade sockets. 
a quarter inch drive, three inch drive, half inch drive. So these are what we got to use to get the. Um, you can see they're called E sockets, and the set comes E4 all the way to E24. So you're gonna need this also if you're gonna do this job. That's like a crumple zone type kind of deal. All right, now we need to take out this pinch bolt because it pinches on the pin there. So this has to come all the way out because there's also a uh, groove inside the ball joint that this locks in as well as pinches. And then this pinch bolt here has to come out and it's the same size socket as this. Same same style socket as was in the, the kit that I showed you guys. All right guys, so this car has a uh, few 16 millimeters on it, so when you go to work on it, if you don't have a 16 millimeter wrench, uh, box end, open end, combination wrench, uh, be sure to go buy one because you're going to need it. Alright, it's out. Now, well, as you can see, that is stainless steel, or a Galvi, I think it's Galvi. This one here is just black. Let me open it up and show you real quick. This is just like a black metal. This is gonna rust really bad. So, I didn't damage this at all, so I'm gonna put this one back in. I'm not gonna use the one that came with the kit. Uh, I'm gonna try to drive this guy out now. gonna put this on here loose for now and a lot of times if you just whack that with a two pound sledge you can get the ball joint to pop there we go that way there you don't have to put a pickle fork in there and ruin the ruin the boot there's nothing wrong with this tie rod end and we want to reuse it so that's out now all right, guys, you're gonna need some massive sockets too. Uh, I bought these at Harbor Freight. It came in a same came in a kit. Let me show you what they look like real quick. Here's the kit. You're gonna need them. And an impact 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 gun helps a lot. Trust me. I mean, try getting that off with brake bar. Oh, I got to get this guy right here and same deal it looks like there's a nut on the back side of this but I think it might be welded on doesn't look like it's the type that spins so that should be okay so I don't really have a lot of room to work here so I'm just gonna buzz that off and uh, come back when I'm done all right both the arm bolts are out one has a nut on the end the other one does not it just go straight in and I'll tell you what Get yourself an impact gun if you're going to do this job. You can do it with regular wrenches and breaker bars, but an impact gun really makes it that much easier. All right, uh, let's go up top here now. Everything is disconnected on the bottom, so let's get the let's get the strut tower off here. And basically, all we have to do is just take off this retainer clip right here. All you got to do is just spread it out. These are not reusable. Um, actually. It should be a new one. A new one comes with a new strut. Um, they're not reusable. You really shouldn't reuse these. So whatever, whatever you do to them doesn't really matter if you ruin them or not. It does not matter. There we go. 
Luckily it hit the ground. <laughs> and that's it. It just falls right down. That's pretty much it. That's all that holds it up there, folks. That's it. Alright, now that that's out. And again, you don't reuse these. Those go in the trash. Now all we gotta do is just uh, pry this guy out. I wanna tap on here. Just to uh, I want you to stand and be able to see it. Just in case that's rusted in there. I don't really want to muscle around with it. So I'll give it a couple of taps. To make sure it moves. And it seems like it's pretty rusted. Seems pretty rusted in there. There we go. It's free now. All right, let me um, let's move you back a little bit more. So you guys can see what's going on. And I am going to need a pry bar. I'm going to do my pry bar. Like this. Now we just need to pry this guy out. It's probably going to fall right on the ground. Tap that out of there. There we go. That's it. There it is. Oh, it's glory. Alright, let's uh let's pull this off into an open area. Suspension's off. This thing is really in rough shape right there. But we're gonna replace it. And uh We'll show you how to take this all apart in a minute, but first we need to get the drive axle out because we are going to replace this as well while we're in here. I think it's easier for me to show you how to get this out on the floor here. So this is the drive axle for the passenger side. And what we have to do is just three bolts. There's one here, one here, one there on this carrier baron. And we need to take these three bolts out. They're 13 millimeters and they're down the side of there. Show you Tom. Show you one real quick. There's two there, and I don't know if you can see the one down there. There it is, right there. So I'm going to take those three out, and hopefully we can pull the axle. All right, guys. I bought this bar at a yard sale or a flea market or something, and the guy had a bunch of these flat bars, and it's basically a carpenter's. This is used for um, taking roof shingles off. You want to get underneath or even uh, siding but that angle right there is absolutely ideal to get cb axles out because i'll show you real quick if i can hold that thing get the light over see how we got that in there and i can just pull on it and it usually pops them right out on the end of these lines here. It's not gonna hurt anything. Keep it from rusting out. It'll also keep the seal good. Alright. Alright, 
Let's see if I can slide this guy back in. Put the three bolts back in. These three bolts, and we'll be good as new. I'm gonna put a little bit of Never Seize on there, just in case I haven't need to take this off again. All right, guys, I got the bolts in. Two on the top, two on the bottom, they're loose. I did have to put a pry bar under here and kind of lift it up a little bit in order for me to get those screws in because just the sheer weight of this overhanging here was giving me a bit of a trouble. Uh, just a tip on how I did it, even though I did it off camera. So now I'm just gonna take this guy here. I'm gonna go in there and I am just gonna snug these up. That's it. To get the bottom one, I have to lift the axle, so you get the idea. All right, the new drive axle's in. That's all set. Now, we need to go start working on this thing. And I think the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take the old control arm off, and then we're gonna take the strut out. I soaked most of this stuff with penetrant for a couple of days. This should come right up right out, just by hitting with the hammer. See that it's a little bit of corrosion on there. Ball joint wasn't worn out, but this here was for sure. You can see it's just cracking and breaking. It's actually a, two pieces right now. Eventually, this would have uh, started really banging when we drove. All right, the strut looks like it's loose, so this should come right out. Thank you. Nope. Give it a couple of taps. damage the aluminum at all so we gotta be careful how we get this out of here Alright, this is the uh, new control. Here's the ball joint boot. And this is supposed to protect the ball joint during shipping, but clearly it didn't do anything because it wasn't on it. <laughs> this one is cast iron, and the other one is cast aluminum. It was, uh, a little bit weird, but it is the one for this car, so we are going to use it. All right, I guess, uh, and you can see here how the bushing is supposed to look one piece. Basically, all we're going to do is just slide it in place, put the bolts in, call it a day. I don't want to ruin, ruin that, so I want to make sure that's out of the way. That's our ABS sensor. I don't want anything that's happened to that. Let's put that up there for now. All right. Gonna take a little persuasion. Tap into place.
put the bolts back in. And I want to never seize this guy. I'm not saying I'm going to have to take this thing apart again, but I don't know. I think I want to leave everything loose until we uh, we get the whole thing in. What we got to do now is we got to clean this up. And I'm just going to use a piece of scotch ray pad because you want, if there's any galling in there at all, you want to make sure you get it out because you want this to slide in there really good. Now, I'm not removing material because this is a precision machine hole and it is a clamp. So you want it to be really tight. It also aligns the suspension, so you don't really want to mess with this. Just cleaning it up, that's all. Same thing down here. This one's got some uh, powder in it, some oxidation. So we're gonna clean that up a little bit as well. All right, we got the new strut here. And we gotta take this sticker off. The sticker here says, uh, how they compress spring, retain from removing from unit, injury or fatally or fatality can be caused. Well, we're not gonna fatally injure ourselves because we're not taking the spring off. So thanks for the warning. Alright, now this guy right here has to go down inside. this hole and as you can see it's pretty tight it doesn't want to fit now the way that I get these to slide in really nice is I just heat them up with a torch it expands the aluminum now you could you could wedge something in here force this open I don't suggest doing that because you risk damaging this you don't want to damage this knuckle you don't have to buy another one um, it doesn't take a lot the difference between this and that, it's only a few thousandths of an inch. Um, about the size of a human hair. A little bit of heat goes a long way. I'll show you what I mean. So as of right now, this doesn't go in. It does not want to go in. I could force it in, but I run the risk of both galling this up, which I just did. Galled up the paint a little bit, but that's okay. I risk galling this up and galling this up. I don't want to do that. So we're going to heat it up. She's in. I'm gonna put a little bit of red grease around this. I'll keep it from corroding. Hopefully keep it from getting that chalky residue on it again. Who knows? And I'm going to put some red grease on the splines. Alright, let's see. Let's see if we can get this guy in there. This tends to be the hottest pot. All right, guys. <laughs> as you can see, I'm a sweaty mess. It is hot, probably, well, I don't know, 95 and humid in the garage today. And my GoPro shut off because it overheated and uh, it took about 20 minutes for it to turn back on. I had to put a new battery in it. Anyway, I'll show you where I'm at right now. This is where I'm at. Um, I know I didn't get to record all of it, but 
I wasn't gonna wait 20 minutes. So what I did was I used a floor jack, which is right there. I put it underneath there, jacked it up. I hammered in one of the uh, old clips just to hold it up into the pocket so that the weight, so that it was being suspended because it's pretty heavy. The assembly's pretty heavy for one person. Had the drive axle in there. I was jacking it up a little bit more and it popped off the jack and it pulled the CV joint out inside there. So I had to take it all apart. Hammer the CV joint back in. I, I say hammer. Just line it up and tap it with the mallet a couple times and it fell back in. Anyway, it's back in. The axle's in through here. I'm back where I was. All I gotta do is get that pin in. And basically what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my foot I'm gonna push down on this control arm. I'm gonna push this in by hand. I'm gonna try to line it up and it should pop in. That's the theory anyway, so we'll see. <laughs> Let me see how it works out. See the clear hole all the way through. Ball joints in place. Put the lock screw in there now. All right. Put that on the back. I think we can just uh, press everything in now. I don't know what that chalkiness is over there though. It's kind of weird. Alright. Axle not in here snug. Just to make sure that's in the right spot. Just gonna put that in hand tight for now. We'll talk it after. Alright, I'm gonna turn the other wheel and see if everything's alright. Tighten this up. Now we're going to take a punch. We're going to peen it so it don't come off. As you can see. Back 
All right, everything's hooked up now. I think what I want to do at this point here is I want to grease everything. I want to grease this lower ball joint. It does have a grease fitting on it. What else did I want to grease? Um, I want to grease these two. Oh, here. Put a little grease in that. There's another fitting over here. Put some grease in that too. Whoa. All right, so when you're putting the um, piece of the framework in here for the bumper, um, this piece here has got to go up first. Put the two short bolts in and leave it loose so that it's sagging, sagging down like this, and then you can slide that aluminum uh, tube into it a lot easier. And then you can bolt everything up loose and then tighten it all up at once. All right, you can see what I mean, how, it's, how I got it sagging, because the aluminum piece has to slide right in here. And uh, I'm gonna grab it right now and show you what I mean. That's the aluminum frame, and it's got a slide right at the heel, and then up into this area right here, like that. I'm gonna get a bolt started here through this piece into that, and that'll hold it so that I can get it tied in back there. I'll show it to you when it's done. Alright, so it's all in. And you can see, it's still loose. You can see it got a loose down there. It's loose up here. And now I'm just going to draw everything in. I think I'll tighten it uh, to the front because I don't want any slack in here because this is supposed to be a crumple zone. So I want it tight. I don't want to have any gaps here and I don't want to pull, pull the front and deform the bumper cover or anything. So this one I'm going to tighten first and then I'm going to tighten the back three or the back four second um, again I don't need to show you that and then I'm gonna put all the plastic back on and um, all right everything's in there everything's tight everything's ready to go stand racks in everything looks good I just stopped uh, brake clean the rotor because there's a little bit of uh, grease on it that should be fine what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna wire wheel the hub right here this face and the inside of the rim because when I took it off it was a little crusty as you can see the dust flying so I'm gonna take care of all that put the wheel on this is the last piece of the puzzle put the retainer clip on that's the old one that I put on there when I needed to hold the strut up so I could do the rest of the work. We throw that away, so that's the old one. Here's the new one. Again, these are single use and they just snap together. Doesn't matter which way they go. They're single use. You want to make sure you only use them once and they should go on pretty simple once the weight is on the the strut they just snap in and I'm gonna get a big pair of channel locks to get these to go that last little bit the retainers in and that, that'll keep it from coming out not that this car is ever gonna be airborne so really nothing to worry about there now I just gotta find the cover. What do I do with the cover? And there's the other old one. Throw that away. And here's the cover. We just pop the cover back on. And that's it. All done. Alright. Let's give it a little bit of a ride here. So far, it seems pretty good. Good acceleration and the tune up. Ah, uh, it's staring really good. Feels nice and smooth, nice and tight. I don't hear the clicking sound when I turn the wheel, but let's find out. Of course, I get in the car and it's dead empty, gas lights on. <laughs> so I gotta go get gas.
good. Car's all done. Drives great. In reverse, you can cut the wheel all the way to the left, all the way to the right. Doesn't matter. There's no more CV clicking. Um, the ride's nice. When you hit the bumps, there's no more clunking. Um, so, pretty much done. Uh, there was a comment left uh, on a previous video of this car when I did the um, driver's side strut. And they said that, oh, you got to do both sides. You can't do just one side it won't drive right um blah 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 um technically they're right you should do both sides but it doesn't affect the way the car drives unless the strut's bad on the other side which it wasn't i got another year and a half out of it so i don't know i mean there's people out there that don't have a lot of money and they can't afford to do both sides at the same time if they're doing it themselves and you really don't have to just do one side and then when you get some money or when the other side fails do the other side simple as that that's what i did and uh it's all done anyways thanks for watching guys um i think that's going to do it for the dot um i did all the maintenance on it that i have to do uh there's really nothing left um as you can see i'm an absolute mess it's 75 and humid here today and this thing actually kicked the crap out of me um i got it done uh i'll show you guys my lift here uh, somebody did ask me about this in one of the uh comments this is what it is it's a quick jack bl 5000 slx i'll probably do i'll probably do a little review i got a bunch of videos of me using this jack set jacking system um it does make life a lot easier when you're working on a car um, but anyway thanks for watching thanks for subscribing uh like share tell your friends spread the news do everything you gotta do uh, to help my channel grow um so i so i'll continue to make videos for you guys um i don't know what the next video is going to be but it'll be good i promise uh thanks for watching and i'll see you guys in the next video